Okay, this is the pre-lab lecture for your torque in the second condition of equilibrium lab. Um, right to the point, what is equilibrium? Equilibrium for us is an object sitting still. Equilibrium can also be an object moving at a constant speed in a straight line. But for now, let's deal with the first. Two conditions must be satisfied for an object to be in equilibrium when we know the force is acting on it. Um, the first condition is a pretty straightforward and easy one. It just says that the sum of the forces is zero. And these are vectors. We're only gonna stick with two dimensions. In fact, one dimension, the vertical, is most important. We'll choose, right, x is horizontal, y is vertical, plus up, minus down, a horizontal plus to the right, minus to the left. Okay, that's all that it is. The vector sum of all the forces is zero, where the net force on the object is zero. Um, in two dimensions, this is two equations, truly. It says that the x component of all the forces added together equals zero and the y components of all the forces summed up equals zero. For our case here, we have three forces, so we would just say that these F1x, F2x, and F3x equals zero. And similarly, all the y components. Usually finding all the components is the difficult part. Once you get that, then you can use this fact that the sum of the x components is zero and the y components is zero to solve for things you might need to know. Notice though that for all these things to add together to get zero, some of them must be negative. Some of the x directed forces must be to the left, some must be to the right, negative or positive, and same thing with the y direction. And this both must occur at the same time. Um, the amount of positive y force is equal to the amount of negative y force such that those sums go to zero. That's all we really care about here. Not super important for today's lab, but you need to realize it will be satisfied and you will be asked to show it is satisfied um, for a couple cases. Um, now the second condition involves how those forces are oriented and how that relates to how an object would rotate. And so when we talk about an object rotating or the potential for an object to rotate, we talk about something called torque, right? Um, the second condition just says that the sum of all of the torques, which we write as a Greek letter tau, the sum must equal zero. Um, because we're only gonna have forces in the xy plane, all of the torques will either cause a positive sense of rotation, which is counterclockwise, or a negative sense of rotation, which is clockwise. Um, to uh, review a little bit, a torque is a twisting force, and it's quantified. Letter tau tells me my torque. It's equal to the force magnitude write it out in words here, it's the force magnitude times the moment arm. If you look in the figure, you'll see what we mean by moment arms for each force. And the moment arm is given by R, F times R. The moment arm is more precisely the distance perpendicular from pivot or rotation point axis to the line of action of the force. And all those dotted lines for each force are the lines of action. F1 has a moment on R1 because R1 is the perpendicular distance to the line of action of F1. So F1 times this magnitude R is the torque that it would create. 
would want to create a clockwise sense of rotation. F2 acts along this direction. Its moment arm, R2, is this perpendicular distance to its line of action. F2 times R2 is equal to torque number 2. That would want to cause a counterclockwise sense of rotation. F3 acts along this direction. Its moment arm is R3. The torque 3 would be magnitude of this force times this distance. So applying what we know, the sum of the torques, which is tau 1 plus tau 2 plus tau 3, which can be written as force 1 times its moment arm, etc. Force 2 times its moment arm, and force 3 times its moment arm. Finding these things first is usually the difficult part. Add those all together, you got to get zero. Which then implies that some of these torques are positive and some are negative. And so when we talk about direction, well, it's either plus or minus. And in this case, a torque that causes a sense of rotation counterclockwise is positive and a torque that causes a sense of rotation that is clockwise is negative. You have to explicitly put those numbers in there. And similarly as with the forces, some negative torques have to be in there. Some clockwise torques must meet some counterclockwise torques added together to get zero, right? Some of them are gonna to have to be negative. That's our second condition of equilibrium. The first and second condition must be met at the same time for an object to be at rest. Um, in particular, to your lab, we're looking at a meter stick and we're using it as um, basically a little balance. And because it's of uniform density, it has a center of mass at the center, at the 50 centimeter point. This is my center of mass uh, symbol. Um, so if we wanted to balance it and make it sit still, we would probably support it on our fingertip at the 50 centimeter point. And that is because, right, so here's our support. And that is because if we draw on our forces, the support pushes on the center of mass right here. So here's your support force. Your center of mass is a very valuable thing because at the center of mass is where all the weight of the meter stick can be concentrated, can assume to be concentrated. So when I support, I apply a support force with my finger right underneath the um, center of mass, it should balance at that point. Um, of course, if we don't support it at that point, we could be in trouble. So if I put the support to the left of the center of mass, then there's problems. Why is that? Well, the support applies an upward force at this point, F support, but the center of mass is where we can assume all of the meter stick's weight is concentrated at, meter stick mass times G. And so what's going to happen? Well, it's supported at this point, so it's going to rotate about this point, right? The weight causes a torque and causes the object to want to rotate. We don't want that to happen. How would you do that? You'd put your hand over here or something over here to apply a counteracting force, right? You, this is going to be basically your counterclockwise force. And you're going to do that with mat, weight hangers and masses, etc. cetera. Um, and that is essentially what the first part of your lab looks like. You balance the meter stick at its 30 centimeter point, it wants to rotate this way. You put a weight hanger at 10 centimeters. Remember the moment arm is RA. So you're going to have your weight force down at this point. Here's your moment arm RA. It causes a torque, causing a positive sense of rotation clockwise. But the center of mass wants to rotate this way, so it creates a clockwise torque, which we call negative. Those have to be equal. And so you're going to find the mass. You're going to set these two equal, knowing this value of weight and um, knowing G. 
and determine what the mass is and compare that to what you measured on the beam balance, the triple beam balance. Second part of, of part A, experiment number two, you support your meter stick at its center of mass, so those forces can be ignored because they can't cause a rotation because their moment arms are zero. And so then you place 150 grams at 20 centimeters, which is a moment arm of 30 centimeters away from a sense of the uh, rotation center right here. So here's your moment arm. And then you're going to take 100 grams, and you're going to have to place it at some unknown place. And you need to experimentally find that place. And then see that the torque it creates at this point is equal to the torque at this point, and it will bounce, right? And so you're going to need to find this moment arm. You can call it X, but it has to be, you have to remember it has to be, so I'll just call this the moment arm counterclockwise and the moment arm clockwise. Be very careful, you need to know this distance. All right. The last one is a little more elaborate. You take the meter stick and you support it at two points with, with uh, spring scales. Thus, you know what the support forces are. And we can look at both conditions of equilibrium um, pretty um, easily. We have weight hangers at x1, x2, and x3 as, as given, approximately. Um, you know you have the center of mass force, the weight at the center here. And so you are going to find um, locations for f1, f2, and f3 by moving them around these points until you get a nice horizontal meter stick that's not moving. Then you're in equilibrium. And so the spring scales will tell you the value of the force, right? They will read to you FA and FB. Notice they're directed upward, they're positive, and so these two positive forces must be equal when summed together with all of these forces here. Equal and opposite so that there is no motion. And then you will be um, showing that the sum of the torque about this point XA due to all of these forces is equal to the sum of the torques found at XB. And you'll need to realize that any force acting right at the rotation point is not going to cause any torque. The moment arm is zero because you are going right through the rotation point. 